will discuss about acute glomerulonephritis in children. Post um, and the most common one is post abdominal glomerulonephritis. So, what is acute glomerulonephritis? Acute glomerulonephritis is characterized by abrupt onset of hematuria. Oliguria, edema, and hypertension. And the clinical severity varies, and mild disease may go undetected. And severe cases have anuria, hypertensive encephalopathy, and heart failure. And the post-reptococcal glomerulonephritis is the most common cause of acute glomerulonephritis in India. So just see, we can uh, see what are the etiology of the acute nephritic syndrome. So it can be acute nephritic syndrome um, can be divided into post-infectious and due to systemic vasculitis. And other causes and in uh, post infectious it can be due to streptococci staphylococci pneumococci Meningococci and the triponema pallidum, salmonella, leptospira, and uh, plasmodium malaria, plasmodium falciparum, and toxoplasma filaria and hepatitis B, hepatitis C, cytomegalovirus, parvovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, echovirus, varicella. So you can remember it lies, uh, it has uh, bacterial in that includes streptococci, staphylococci, pneumococci, meningococci, triponema, salmonella, leptospira <coughs> and you can uh, remember as the um, parasitic uh, malaria, filaria and viral, viral causes hepatitis B virus, hepatitis C virus, cytomegalovirus, parvovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, echovirus, varicella then next about the vasculitis, systemic vasculitis that include uh, Henochonlin purpura, HSP, microscopic polyarteritis, vaginous granulomatosis and the other causes. Other causes, membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis. IgA nephropathy, hereditary nephropathy, and SLE. So these are the causes of uh, acute glomerulonephritis syndrome. Now coming to the post glomerulonephritis, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. That is the most common, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. And it is the acute glomerulonephritis following infection by group A beta hemolytic streptococci And the streptococcal infection of the throat or skin precedes the onset of nephritis by 1 to 4 weeks. 1 to 4 weeks. Infection of skin or throat precedes. 
then only few strains of streptococci are nephro nephritogenic that is types 4 and 12 causing pharyngitis and types 49 causing pyoderma and uh, about the pathology in light microscopy like micro microscopic examination glomeruli are enlarged and ischemic and capillary loops are narrowed and uh, then uh, there will be proliferation of mesangial cells and neutrophil infiltration and the immunofluorescence microscopy shows deposits of IgG and complement C3 along the capillary wall and in electron microscopy deposits are on the subepithelial uh, uh, side of glomerular basement membrane can be seen. Next about the clinical features. Clinical features usually post-reptococcal glomerular nephritis affect the school going children. School age children. And more commonly it affects boys. And is uncommon below 3 years. And onset is rapid. And usually first uh, puffiness of puffiness of eyes, puffiness around the eyes, pedal edema and urine is polar colored urine. urine and uh, that is hematuria and this on this may be or uh, if uh, may be lasting only a few hours and does not persist beyond one to two weeks and with the degree of oliguria correlates with the uh, disease severity so oliguria occurs and if it is severe then there will be severe oliguria and anuria is uncommon and hypertension will be there in almost 50 percentage of the patients and usually resolves with the loss of edema and a typical presentations are convulsions due to hypertensive encephalopathy and uh, left ventricular failure pulmonary edema due to malignant hypertension or hypervolemia and acute kidney injury or nephrotic syndrome. Then next about the laboratory findings. Urine examination shows 1 to 2 plus protein with RBC and RBC and granular cast. And this indicates the glomerular infl inflammation. And uh, WBC also will be present. And uh, we should not be, uh, we should not uh, regard it as the evidence of UTI. And uh, hemodilution may result in normocytic, normochromic anemia. And there, uh, there will be uh, elevation of uh, urea and creatine. RFT impaired, renal function test impaired and um, there will be hyponatremia and hyperkalemia and the chest x-ray 
shows prominent vascular markings and this suggests hypervolemia then in serologic evidence of streptococcal infection will be there that is aso titer and anti dna b and uh, titers decrease within, within 4 to 6 weeks and level of serum c3 level of serum c3 is um, high in uh, sorry low in 90 percentage of pa uh, patients and this uh, serum c3 normalizes by 8 to 12 weeks and persistent low c3 levels indicates other forms of glomerulonephritis then next about the management management in case of mild oliguria and uh, normal uh, bp then that can be managed at home and close attention to bp and dietary intake is essential then uh, we can use penicillin but not much effect it can be given if active pharyngitis or pyoderma is present next about the diet the intake of sodium sodium and potassium and fluids are restricted until be until blood levels of creatine reduce and urine output increases and over hydration may increase the risk of hypertension so the fluid uh, fluid intake should be uh, equal to the insensible losses and 24 hour urine output then diuretics and if there is more moderate edema it can, we can give oral furosemide and at a dose of 1 to 3 mg per kg and if there is severe um, edema or severe uh, severe pulmonary edema then we can give iv furosemide at a dose of 2 to 4 mg per kg next uh, the treatment of hypertension for mild hypertension uh, restriction of salt and water is uh, will be adequate and antihypertensive should be used if there is persistent hypertension or high bp that include amlodipine if it is in diuretics and beta blockers and angiotensin converting enzymes inhibitors ac inhibitors are not much used because they carry a high risk of uh, hyperkalemia and uh, patients with the hypertensive emergencies then we can give uh, iv nitroprusside or labetalol then management of lv failure if lv failure is the uh, hypertension should be controlled and iv furosemide can be given and uh, if di diuresis is not occurring then dialysis may be needed and other respiratory support with uh, positive and expiratory pressure will be needed then in case of prolonged oliguria then dialysis may be needed 
in severe renal failure and prolonged oligoanuria or fluid overload and life threatening electrolyte disturbances then uh, renal biopsy is not much indicated and it is rarely indicated in those suspected to have post streptococcal glomerulonephritis except when renal function is severely impaired beyond 7 uh, days 7 to 10 days if renal function is impaired then we may have to consider renal biopsy and also if serum c3 is persistent persistently low beyond 12 weeks and also uh, if features suggestive of sle is there then we have to consider renal biopsy and about the outcome and prognosis the acute post abdominal glomerulonephritis has an excellent prognosis in childhood and the symptoms begin to resolve in the first week and gross hematuria and significant proteinuria disappear within 2 weeks and uh, microscopic hematuria and slight proteinuria may persist for several months hypertension subsides within the uh, first 2 to 3 weeks